So Baruch 3 and 5, I read it again. Re remember, remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. For thou art the Lord, our power, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. Verse 7, speaking of, speaking of being a tributary. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name. That fear of the Lord is coming back. And that's why we're calling upon the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh again. You know, in spirit and in truth. And praise thee in our captivity. And we're, we're beginning to learn again how to praise the Lord in our captivity. Because it tells you in um, 2 Kings, uh, the 8th chapter, you know, it tells you in 2 Kings, the 8th chapter, that we will bethink ourselves. You know, we will bethink ourselves in the last days. Meaning come back to who we were. The Lord will put the spirit back in us to come back, you know, to, to being Israelites again. Baruch 3 and 7, continuing on, that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity, which we're doing now. The, the elect are praising the, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, in their captivity, wherever they may be in the earth. That's why we see the camps popping up everywhere. It says, for we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. So now we remember through this book of remembrance, as the Bible's known, of, of why we fell, we fell away, why we went off, why the Most High brought judgment against us. It says, verse 8, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So we are today, at this time, in our captivity. And how do we know that? Because Yahweh Shai is the only one that can come free the children of Israel out of captivity. So we are yet this day, Baruch 3 and 8, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us. And that's why it says that, you know, why, why did Israel, you know, become small amongst the nations? I'm speaking about that. Because we were dispersed amongst all the nations. It says, for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payment. So being a tributary is because we are subject to payments to the other nations. Because if we were in rulership, like in the time of King Solomon, during that 40 year reign, that 40 year period, the nations were paying tribute unto the children of Israel. It says, subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord, Yahweh our power. So because our people, you know, stopped keeping the covenants, broke the law, statutes the commandments, broke the covenant with the Lord, turn to idols, begin to worship other gods, you know, begin to just uh, commit different forms uh, of abominable, abominable uh, acts toward the Lord and add sin to sin, you know, continue in evil doing, which is iniquity. All those things, you know, led to what? The degradation, the destruction of, of the nation, of the people. See? So now let's go back. Go back to the book of Lamentations. Lamentations 1, and two, so Lamentations 1 and 2, it says, she wept sore in the night, speaking of Israel, that people before a place that we read, it says, she wept sorely in the night and her tears are on her cheeks, showing you the destroyed state of the children of Israel. You see, it says, <clears throat> and her tears are on her cheeks among all her lovers, she have none to comfort her. So amongst all the nations, which our people turn to, which will be symbolic of the lovers. They turn to all these different nations and all these ways of the world because they, they, they have more, um, more comfort in serving these other gods and being like the other nations as opposed to being set aside, being holy and being the servant of the Most High. So all the lovers, all these other nations, which we're gonna get into, our people turn to, and it says it was none to comfort her. It says, and among all her lovers, she have none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. And that's Psalm the 83rd chapter, which I'll just quote it, which we know it goes into all the other nations taking Israel into captivity. Psalm the 83rd chapter, when you read from verse one on down, you know, from one on down, all the other nations, you know, conspired to take the children, children of Israel into captivity. Now, what happened when that happened? All the nations conspired to take the children of Israel into captivity. So, that was the nations dealing treacherously with her, which, which that her is speaking of Israel. Now it says there was none to comfort her. Quick precept, going into how our people turned to the nations, but then as the Lord gave us over to the nations, the Most High was showing that the nations were never set up for us to be comfortable with, with, with serving. The nations were set up to destroy the children of Israel because the nations are supposed to be the servants, you know, of the sons of God which are the Israelites. So it says, the, the scripture say there was none to comfort her. Jeremiah 3 and 13, 
It says, only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord Yahweh, thy power, and has scattered thy ways to the strangers. See, our ways, you know, have been scattered amongst the strangers. So wherever Jake, you know, was scattered to, Jake is doing what? Taking on the, the ways of, of, of those nations. Tells you in the Maccabees that our people, evil men, came together and said, we, we should go and, and, and take on the ways of the heathens. You know? Let, let, let's do away with, with the ways of our forefathers. Let's take on the ways of the heathen. Jeremiah 3 and 13, it says, and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, speaking of the nations, and ye may and ye have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord Yahweh Abashai. So that's how our people went into captivity. Was was not obeying the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is, is his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is the law, statutes, and commandments. That's the voice of the Lord. You know? So now, there was none to comfort her. So these nations, you know, that's why the Lord said, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. So wherever we are scattered, we're not gonna find no rest, no peace there. Because the truth is the only thing that's gonna bring us back to the Prince of Peace, which is another title for Yahweh Shai. See? So now, there was none to comfort her. Let's go back in Jeremiah, the second chapter, Jeremiah 2, and get another precept. This is Jeremiah 2, I'll start at uh, 13. It says, for my people have committed two evils, Jeremiah 2 and 13, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewn out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. That's the ways of the world. All the ways of the world. The philosophies, the religions, you know, and, and, and all the people. The, the, the people of the world that Jake has went and been service unto in captivity, they are part of, you know, those systems. They've cultivated those systems that Jake has believed in. Verse 14, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Why are our people destroyed? They're destroyed because they refused to return back to the living power of Yahweh Bashem Yom So the Lord set it up in these last days where the elect will come back unto the Most High. That's why the brothers that's positioned on the four corners of the earth, you know, that's so why the hopeful elect are out preaching and teaching this word to help seal and bring back, you know, the tribes of Jacob. But the elect, that, that promise, you know, that promise seed, the remnant, the elect amongst, the, amongst Jacob, amongst the Israelites. So now, Israel is spoiled because it refuses to come back to serve it. Yeah, how about Shimei So That's why our people are spoiled or destroyed. Lamentations 1 and 3. It says, Judah is gone into captivity, the head of the tribes. So the head, the head fell. So all the other tribes fell as well. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. And that great servitude what was getting into the fact of being uh, Jake would be here, you know, servant um, through the curses, um, and that's through the, the the transatlantic, the Arab and Dutch slave trade. That's that great servitude, which we'll get into that, Lord willing. She dwelleth among the heathen, so that servitude is slavery amongst the heathen. She findeth no rest. There's no rest because in this in this great servitude amongst the heathen, we we found no rest, no rest, no peace, no rest. Or, or peace, you know, um, in servitude underneath Esau. It says, it says all her persecutors overtook her between the straits so we were overtaken by all of our persecutors. And who are all our persecutors? Speaking of the other nations. So now, let's get a quick precept for that. You know, this is the book of Jeremiah. Let's go back to Jeremiah, the 12th chapter this time. So we, we've been given no rest. All of our persecutors, you know, put us in great servitude. Just like going back to ancient Egypt, that was 400 years of great servitude. These are all, you know, these are all the signs of symbolism. And we've been here now 400 years in great servitude. One of the ways we know we're getting close to the end, Jeremiah 12 and verse 7, going into that great servitude of the other nations that we found comfort in, but not Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So this was, this was the Lord, the wrath of the Lord. It was that great servitude being given over to the nations. Jeremiah 12 and 7, I have forsaken mine house I have left my heritage, most high speaking of Israel. I have given I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. Verse 8. Mine heritage, speaking of Israel, is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me, therefore have I hated it. So Israel is crying out unto the Lord. But that, that hatred the Lord is speaking of was him doing what? Doing what it says in um Hosea the fifth chapter. 
you know, the Lord turned turn his back unto Israel, you know, for a period, for a moment of time. Continuing on, the Lord said he hated it. Jeremiah 12 and 9 in a point, it says, Jeremiah 12 and 9, my inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird, showing you because our people have been mixed in with the different nations, start with the Northern Kingdom and, and all of Israel for that matter. They are like a speckled bird, you see? So Israel, Israel come, we got some Israelites that are gonna look like other heathen nations. They're gonna look like, you know, Japanese or Ammonites, Moabites or Chinese, Hamites or Africans. You know, it's gonna look like Edomites, some of them. My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird, for the birds round about, for the birds round about her are against her, speaking of the other nations. Come ye assemble, all the beasts of the field come to devour us. The Lord said, come, you know, come and, and, and take over, overtake my people because they are stiff-necked and hard-hearted and they refuse to return to me. So that's the punishment, right? Which is what? Which is slavery. Which is the slavery. The great servitude we spoke of in Lamentations 1 and 3. Continue on, verse 4. The ways of Zion do mourn because none cometh to the, the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate. So all the so-called leaders of our people during that time of slavery, they were destroyed. Her priests sigh, her virgins are afflicted, and she is in bitterness. So that was a complete fall of the, uh, of the children of Israel, being in the state of bitterness, you know? Being leased among, among the nations. So she is, Israel was, it says is in bitterness. Continue on, verse five. Lamentations one and five, her adversaries are the chief, and who are the chief of nations? Speaking of Esau. So Esau, you know, is the chief of our adversaries, which is why in Psalm, the 83rd chapter, it starts with Esau being the first nation, you know? It says, her adversaries are the chief, her enemies prosper, for the Lord Yahweh have afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions, for all the sins and all the iniquity the children of Israel committed. Her children are going into captivity before the enemy. So that shows our people why we are in this low estate once again, which is why the Lord left it in these last days, you know, with us only having the truth. The only thing that we have, the only thing that's left is the truth. We completely destroyed his people. What reason do we have to be proud? What reason do we have to try to, to be in a mindset that, you know, we can figure it out ourselves? We tried all this, these religions, Christianity, all these other religions, Catholicism, the Northern tribe is real, the Northern kingdom is very heavily into that. All the ways of the world, none of it has worked. So, our people are completely destroyed. All we have is the truth, and the truth is everything. The truth is all we need. All we have is the truth, and all we need is the truth. You know, the truth is what's setting us free, which, which is bringing us back to the Lord. You know? So now, it, says, it said, uh, speaking of the chief, and I spoke of Esau being the chief, it says we were given over to the chief of the nations. You know, roughly paraphrasing. Daniel, 9 and verse 12 going into that and it reads and he saith and, and, and he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judge us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem so all all the the, 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 the most terrible tumultuous things have been done nothing has been done as bad as the captivity of the children of Israel and who was at the forefront of that? The chief of the nations, which is Esau. Esau was at the head of that captivity, bringing us into captivity. He was the leader, he was the leader. He was the chief, you see? So out of all that's been done, nothing has been done as bad as what's been done to the children of Israel. Now, why is that important? Let's continue on. Let's go back to Lamentations 1 and read verse six. Lamentations 1 and six. And from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. What's the beauty? What makes the daughter of Zion beautiful you know it says and from the daughter of zion all her beauty is departed why is it speaking of that beauty what is the thing that makes the daughter of zion beautiful let's get that so all her beauty is departed this is the fall of the nation jeremiah 6 and 2 i have likened the daughter of zion to a comely and delicate woman so zion to zion in the hebrew the monument of the lord which are the israelites you know you know, that beauty has been taken away. That beautiful, that beautiful woman to the Lord has been taken away. She became polluted, you see? 
she became polluted unto the Most High. So all her beauty was taken away. Once again, Jeremiah 62, I've likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and a delicate woman. So that comely, that beautiful, delicate woman, which is Israel, that beauty was taken away, you know, which is once again being overtaken by the nations, not, not having our heritage, which is Jeremiah 17 and 4. The Lord said he would discontinue us from our heritage. So our heritage being taken away, all those things, and servitude, not knowing the name of the Lord again, hey, that beauty was taken away. That's what makes us beautiful when, when we are one with our power. That makes us beautiful in the sight of all the nations, as it says in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, you know? So Lamentations 1 and verse, um, 1 and verse, verse 6, and from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture, and they are gone without strength before the, the pursuer. So we don't have no power before our pursuers, which is, which is the other nations, chiefly Esau. Verse seven, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, remember in the days of her affliction and of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she have had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemies and none did help her. So these nations, hey, the scriptures say in Revelation 11 chapter, they didn't suffer to put our dead bodies in graves. In graves, I mean, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't pity, they didn't have pity for us. You know, they didn't, they didn't come to our aid. They knew that we were the children of Israel, but, but they didn't care. You know, they rejoiced, the scriptures say. They rejoiced in our downfall. So it says, um, Lamentations 1 and 7 again, it says, Jerusalem, remember in the, the days of her affliction and of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she have had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her, which is the nations. The adversary saw her and did mock at her Sabbath. They mocked at us. They mocked, you know, at our laws, statutes, and commandments. They mocked at, you know, the fact that, you know, we, we had fallen. You know, these nations, they didn't put our dead bodies in graves. They didn't have no pity on us, you know? So they mocked. So let's show that these nations mock it. Lamentations 2. Lamentations 2 and verse 16. This is the nations mocking the children of Israel. It says, Lamentations 2 and 16, all thy enemies have opened their mouths against thee. They have, they hiss and gnash the teeth. They say we have swallowed her up, meaning we've completely destroyed the children of Israel. You know, we become completely desolate amongst the nations. We have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we look for. So the nations want it. They rejoice at this, which lines up once again with Psalm the 83rd chapter. It tells you all the nations conspire. Certainly this is the day that we have looked for, we have found, we have found, we have seen it. So the nations rejoiced at the fall of the children of Israel, which is now gonna be the falling of the nations and the children of Israel going back into rulership. So now we are gonna rejoice when, when the Lord gives us that salvation through Yahweh Shai. We are gonna be in the state of rejoicing. So now let's jump to Lamentations, uh, the second chapter here. I started in the first, let's just jump into the second chapter through the spirit. Let's read a little bit, get a few precepts before it gets too dark. Lamentations two and one, it says, now we're speaking about, you know, the fact that the only thing left is the truth. Because we're reading about how our, our people, the Israelites have been destroyed. So all we got left is the truth. The Lord left it in the last days where he said, I'm gonna give you the truth. And the truth is, is what's gonna suffice. You know, the truth and your faith in it. Your faith in your works, believing in his word again. I'm gonna give you the truth to the believers and that's what's gonna keep you. Lamentations 2, and I'm gonna start at verse one. It says, how hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? And that, and that cloud in his anger is speaking of what? Slavery and servitude. Slavery and servitude, you know, which are the curses. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? So this is the anger of the Lord, putting us through hardcore slavery, all the tribes, and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. So the Lord, he, he, allowed, he allowed for the children of Israel to be completely destroyed, you know, rightfully so, you know? So now let's continue on um, with that. Jake being destroyed is the most high's anger. And that's that cloud once again. Verse two, it says, the Lord have, have swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob and have not pity. So the Lord didn't have no pity. And the nations, he put a spirit on the nations not to have no pity either. 
The Lord Yahweh hath swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob and have not pitied. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. A precept that comes to mind is the book of Hosea. It says, it says, um, Judah, you know, it says the daughter of Judah, it says the daughter of Judah, and he hath brought down the kingdom and the princes thereof, which are all the other tribes. That's found in Hosea, the fifth chapter, quick precept. You know, so the Lord brought down all the tribes. Why was that? Hosea 5 and 5, and it reads, And the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity, the northern and southern kingdom, fall in their iniquity. Judah also shall fall with them. So all the tribes fell, which lines up. Let me get it real quick. Through the Spirit, Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. You know, all the tribes fell together. Jeremiah 50, in verse 33, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, the northern southern kingdom again, were oppressed together. We were all in a servitude right here together in Babylon, in America. It says, were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. So we're still in captivity today, and our, and our captors refuse to let us go. You know, they refuse to let us go because of who we are they know that we're gonna come back into power so now let's go back to uh to limitations limitations two the lord said the lord said um he swallowed up all the habitations of, of, of jacob and Jew, and and the tribes it says he have cut off verse three limitations two and three he have cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of israel meaning we have no more power no might he have drawn back his hand, it says, from before the enemy, and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoured round about, which is all we have left is the truth. I keep re-emphasizing re that point. When you read here in Lamentations, which is written by Jeremiah, he was also known as the weeping prophet. And why, why was he weeping? He was weeping for the destruction of Israel. He was seeing the destruction of, of his people and foreseeing what was to come. So it says he devoured us like a fire. You know, after you have a fire, you have nothing but stubble left. We were completely, which is symbolic of us being brought to a very low estate. We were completely destroyed. Now, what is that complete destruction? Let's show that how we were brought to a low estate because it talked about, you know, in the first couple of verses, that cloud. The Lord, there was a cloud over us. And that proverbial cloud is speaking about the, the, the curses. No matter where we go, there's like a cloud being over us, the curses, you know? The, cur the curses is what befall us. No matter where you are, what your stature is, your status in society, wherever you are, Jake, they suffered the same curses. Leviticus 26, going into the curses. Let's go hit this through the spirit, because this covers the curses. We read Deuteronomy 28, but Leviticus 26 is an outline of those curses, which is that cloud, that cloud, that proverbial cloud that's over our people, which they can't understand, you know, why we go through the things we go through and why, why we can't come together, etc. Leviticus 26 to 14, but if you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all my all these commandments. And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but ye, but that ye break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. So the Lord said, when you go and break my covenants, which our people did, you know, and you don't keep my law, statutes, and commandments, and you turn away from me and you serve other gods, this is what I'm gonna do unto you. It says, verse 16, Leviticus 26 and 16, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you to terror. So the Lord said, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna terrorize you. And that's the nations. That, that was the, 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 the servitude, which is why all we have left is the truth. All we have left is the truth. We are still in servitude. We read in Baruch, we are yet this day in our captivity still. It says, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you to terror, consumption, meaning destruction, and the burning og, which is uh, symbolic of fever, you know, working in the fields, which came to our people, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. So everything that you do, you put your hand to, is going to be in vain. We work the fields, and we continue, to, our people continue to do that, you know, symbolically, because you got people now with three and four jobs, paying taxes, being tributaries. So that shows you that we are continually, you know, falling further and further into destruction. But this truth is what gives us freedom. Once again, the truth is the only thing that's left. The Lord left it where we could only 
the believers can only come back to the truth and the truth is the only thing that can free you in the end you know which is give you that exemption from judgment when your hour shot come verse 17 Lamentations 26 and 17 speaking of that cloud that's over our people and I will set my fears I will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies and we've done that you've been slain uh, it tells you in uh, Zechariah 11 and 5 that you know our possessors slay us and hold themselves not guilty you know speaking of the chief of our enemies which is Esau which is the so-called white man and I will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies so we see that still today Jake getting slain before his enemies and nobody is there to plead his cause. They shall, they that hate you shall reign over you, meaning you're going to be a servitude to them and ye shall flee when none pursueth. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then will I punish you seven times more for your sins. So this is the curses, the cloud. Seven times more, seven being completion. I will completely destroy you and I will break the pride of your power and I will make your heaven as iron and your, and your earth is brass. And that's been the time that we've been in servitude. You see? It's been like brass and iron unto us. It's been nothing but hardship. Verse 20. And your strength shall be spent in vain. Everything you do is going to be in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land of the land yield her fruits. Meaning you're not going to be... When, when, when this land was taken from the, um, the Latinos and Native Americans by the conquistadors, they had no power to do anything about it. Their land was taken, you see? And this is also found in Deuteronomy 28 when it says your land is speaking of the Northern Kingdom, more specifically. And why is it speaking to them? Because it was their land that was taken. And Judah, Benjamin, Levi was brought here, you know, to serve oppression with the rest of the nation together. So now, continuing on. Levit Leviticus 26 and 21. And if ye walk contrary unto me, I will not hearken and will not hearken unto me I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins it says I will also send wild beasts among you speaking of the nations because we read earlier in Jeremiah the 12th chapter it said come ye all the beasts of the fields and devour my people so speaking of the other nations I will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and that's what they did they took our children and they sold them unto other plantations you know and into captivity I did a video about two weeks ago in Time Magazine. It showed how a Native American, back in the 1800s, had a Native American woman, child being sold, and then a, 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 a Judite woman, you know, a Southern Kingdom woman was sitting down with her child, you know, nursing, getting ready to, for her child to be sold too. It says, I will also send wild beasts among you, which are the other nations, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number. And that few in number, because we were scattered, right? When we are one nation, we are we are the most populous people on the planet. We can't be numbered. And make you few in number, and your highways, and your highways shall be desolate. All that pride, all that pomp, you're gonna be destroyed. And if ye will not be reformed by me, by these things, the Lord said, as I continue to bring these plagues unto you, these curses, that cloud that's over my people, if you still won't listen, it says, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. See, I'm breaking the covenant. The Lord gonna bring the sword, which is destruction. It says, which shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy, which was done, has been done here in Babylon the Great, which is America. And when I have broken, when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall take your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight. This is through, through servitude, through slavery, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not, for all this, hearken unto me, but will walk contrary unto me. Then will I walk contrary unto you also in fury. It says, and I, even I, will chasten you seven times for your sins. The Lord said, I'm going to completely destroy you. You know, the scriptures speak about why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The Lord said, I'm going to continue to bring more and more destruction unto you. I'm going to bring you so low that you ain't going to know who you are. You ain't going to know from where you're coming or where you're going. You're going to grope at noonday, which lines up with Deuteronomy 28th chapter. Let me get a little bit more. We'll close it out. 
So I just wanted to touch on that in Leviticus, which is that cloud that's over our people. So let's go back to Lamentations, the second chapter. Lamentations 2 in verse 3, it says, He have cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel, so there's no more power left in our people. So all we got left is the truth. He's taking it all away. It says, He have drawn back his right hand, speaking of Yahweh Shah, from before the enemy. It says, And he have burned, and he have burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about. So he, he's taken back his right hand. And how do you do that? Once again, uh, when you go into precepts like uh, Jeremiah 17, I quoted it earlier. He discontinued us from, from our heritage, you know? And once again, Yahweh Shah is, symbolic, is, is, symbol, is uh, symbolism for the right hand of the Lord because he sit at the right hand of the Lord, the scriptures say. So he's he's taking Yahweh Shah, he's taking the truth away, you know? Yahweh Shah is symbolic of the truth, which he's taking away wisdom and our savior. So all we got left is the truth. The Lord took everything else away from us. So what do we got to be proud of? What do we got to be in the spirit of rebellion, which is at war with the Most High? What, what, why should we be in the spirit of the world when the Lord has given us a way out? The truth is the way out, you know? The truth is all we need. Continuing on, Lamentations 2 and 4. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. So all of our people for all their talents and all the greatness that they possessed, the Lord, uh, uh, the Lord became an enemy to his people. Because of what? Because, you know, they, they refused to, to come back to him. So he became an enemy. So he allowed the, our people to be destroyed, taken over by the nations. It says, all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion he poured out his fury like fire. So the Lord poured out his fury like fire. And he set it up where only the truth was going to be left for the believers in the last day. So now let's get that. You know, that was hardcore slavery. He said he poured out his fury like fire. So let's get that fury. What does it mean when he poured out his fury like fire? This is out of the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus showing the Lord's fury being like fire. The book of Ecclesiasticus 40, and I'll get a few verses. Ecclesiasticus 40, and I'll read down a little bit through the Spirit. This is the Lord's fury, which was like fire. It says, Great travail is created for every man, and an heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. So when you go into that heavy yoke, that's slavery. That the righteous sons of Adam is speaking of the Israelites. Well, when you go into that, that heavy yoke, the slavery, if you if you go and put Yokes of iron is going to show you a bunch of Negro looking, looking people, black, so-called black people, you know, it's going to show you them with yokes of iron on their neck. You put yokes of iron on our neck, which lines up with Deuteronomy 28 and 48, which it says we, we will serve our enemies in one of all things. And he will put a yoke of iron on our necks. You put yoke of iron, you Google it, it shows you what? Once again, nothing but pictures of Negroes and it shows Native Americans, Latinos as well, as you continue to scroll down, you know, showing you who the Israelites are. That yoke of iron is symbolic to the children of Israel, which we read earlier that, that what's been done to the children of Israel, that it, it, nothing is the light of what's been done to, to the children of Israel. That's one of the ways we know that these curses only fit us. It says, continuing on, great travail is created for every man and in heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. So that's speaking of the Israelites. It says, from the day that they go out of the, their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things. So the day that you are all the time you're here, the scriptures say, is but a shadow on the earth. So from the time we're here, when we were born from our mother's womb, hey, that was going through that, that heavy captivity and slavery. Well, once again, we only have 40 years of peace when we rule. So most of the time we've been in servitude under other nations. It says, verse two, to rock 40 and two, this is that the wrath of the Lord being poured out like fire their imaginations of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. And that fear of heart comes from what? Going through slavery and servitude, you know? So, so the Lord completely pulled out, poured out his, his, his spirit, his fury like fire in his last, uh, this last captivity, you know, the most high, hey, hey, his fury was, went to another level, which was the destruction of our people. Cause it tells you in Isaiah uh, 47 and six, that the Most High was wroth with his people. He polluted his, his inheritance. He gave us over to, to our adversaries. It says, their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. 
from him that sitteth on the throne of glory unto him that is humble in the earth and ashes. So it was a time where Jake was ruling, you know, in Europe and different places, you know. What was the end result of that? From him that sitteth upon the throne of glory unto him that is humble in the earth and ashes, down to our people that's been in a low estate. And now you see some Jakes now look like they're prospering, but this is what the scriptures say. From him that weareth purple and a crown, purple symbolic of what? Royalty, you know. For him that wear purple and a crown, unto him that is clothed with a linen frock. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife. This is the fury of the Lord. The Lord said he poured out his anger, you know, like fire. It says wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife, and in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep, do change his knowledge. So that's going through all that hardship, you know? And our people continually are, are under that hardship now, wondering about how they're gonna pay their bills, wondering about they gotta take, you know, take the juice, you know, uh, uh, you know what, what is that gonna mean? You know, wondering if, you know, if they can make ends meet. Just being concerned about your everyday life. Do they have enough money? Just being completely destroyed being in a place of, of, of complete destruction because they don't have the truth. The truth is the only thing that's gonna free you. But you got to first free your mind and come back to the Lord and give him your whole heart. You know, your law in the Hebrew. So no matter what what position our people are in, you know, etc., they still suffer the curses. That's that cloud. Verse six, a little or nothing is his rest. See, the Lord said, arise ye and depart for this is not your rest. So no matter what position you're in, whether you Floyd Mayweather, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Oprah, you know, Bob Johnson, you're a big time, famous entertainer, athlete, don't matter. It says a little to nothing is his rest because you're never gonna get no rest in this place because there's always something you gotta worry about. Worry about taxes, child support. Look, look R. Kelly, look how he got took down. Before he got taken down by all the scandals and all that, what was going on? The main thing that was going on was what? The main thing that was going on with R. Kelly he was, he was dealing with uh, child support. See? He was dealing with child support. All, 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 all the stuff that was going on with the lawyers and so on and so forth, it was taking them down for that. That's initially what he went into jail for, and then he came with all the other allegations. You know? It says a little to nothing is his rest, so you never get a rest here. Look, another example. Um, you got um, Bill Cosby, a great example. When Prince died, look how he died. Going into um, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston. It's the same thing over and over again. A little or nothing is his rest, and afterward he is in his sleep, as in the day of watch, keeping watch. Trouble in the vision of his heart. See, you trouble. You become troubled in heart. You see? That's that heavy yoke. Trouble in his vision of heart, as if he were escaped out of a battle. When all is safe, he awaketh. This is, this is when we're going to get salvation out of this place. When all is safe, he is awakened and marveleth that the fear was nothing. Then we're going to know that all that was for nothing, all, all, all that didn't matter. You know, not that it was for nothing, because it was for, for punishment, but when we, are, when we are given the kingdom, it's not gonna matter, you know? We're not gonna care. The Lord said, behold, I make all things new. So none of this is gonna matter in the end for those that, that return. Let's get a little bit more. Um, let's go back to Lamentations. We'll get ready to close it out. Lamentations 2. Lamentations 2 and verse 5, and it reads, it says, the Lord was as an enemy. He have swallowed up Israel. So that's why, once again, I keep reemphasizing that the only thing left is the truth. When you read, when you read in the scriptures, you see, you know, what the Most High did and why he did it. He left it where the only thing left is the truth. You see? It says, Lamentations 2 and 5, the Lord was as an enemy. He have swallowed up Israel. He have swallowed up all her places. He hath destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the daughter of, of Judah mourning and lamentations. So the only thing that's increased here by believing in our enemies and not coming back to the Lord is lamentations and mourning. That's what has increased, you know? So now, continue on to verse six. It says, he hath violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly the Lord Yahweh hath caused the solemn feast, the Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion, and hath despised in his indignation, in the indignation of his anger, 
the king and the priest. Let me start that back from the top. I've got a preset for this. Lamentations 2 and 6, he had violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. So the Lord just took away his, his resting place with Israel. He took away his people. He destroyed them, right? And what is this, what is this referring to? A quick precept uh, right here in the book of Isaiah. It says he violently took away his people. And once again, that's getting into this, you know, this, this heavy yoke, this oppression, which is slavery and servitude. We're almost done. Isaiah 22, and I'm going to start at verse 17. It says he violently taken away, you know, his people. Isaiah 22 and verse 17. And it reads, Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. Speaking of the transatlantic, the Arab, Dutch, and Native American slave trade. This is how he carried away, which is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. It's the precept for that. He will send us into Egypt again, which is bondage, servitude. It says, Isaiah 22 and verse 17. Or, yeah, Isaiah 22 and verse 17. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. That's, that, that's the transatlantic Arab and Dutch slave trade. When we were all brought together back in, in, in Jeremiah, I read it 50 and 33. We were brought together to serve captivity. It says, Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. He cover thee with what? That's that cloud. It says a, a big cloud is over the children of Israel, which is the curses. Verse 18, He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. That's being on those slave ships, being tossed to and fro, like a ball, it says. You know, he will, he, will he will turn and toss us like a ball to and fro. You see? He will surely, verse 18, and violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. And that large country is speaking of Babylon. It says, there shalt thou die, and there the chariots of the glory shall be the shame of the Lord's house. So all that we will hope for, you know, all the glory our people had it would be our shame for all the glory the Lord gave us now it's a shame you know because now we are the least among the nations now now we are the most insignificant people we are the lowest of the totem pole so to speak so all the glory that we had was really turned to shame so now let's go back Lamentations 2 let's close it out and 7 the Lord hath cast off his altar he hath abhorred his sanctuary he have given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They made, they have made a noise in the house of the Lord, Yahweh, as in the day of a solemn feast. The Lord hath proposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion, and that's the temple. People have completely destroyed. You know, our, you know, our homeland, and and then our, and then Jerusalem, uh, people before it's a place, the people itself. It says. The wall of the daughter of Zion, he have stretched out a line. He have not withdrawn his hand from destroying. That's why we only had the truth. You know, that's why we only had the truth. Because the curses are still up. The curses are still upon us. He have not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he made the rampart, which is also a wall, and the wall to lament. They languished it together. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He have destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princess are among the Gentiles. See, we rule by the other nations. The law is no more, and that's a big part. This is our righteousness among the nations. When you read Deuteronomy the fourth chapter, I'll quote it again. See, the law has gone away. And that, that's what separates us from the nations. Or we will be like beasts like the nations are like an unto. Brute beasts. Her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. And these false prophets out here, the Lord said, I will rise up prophets and give you prophets according to my heart. You know, so we know that's the true men of the Lord today. That's waking up on the four corners of the earth. Because the false prophets in this land, whether they're entertainers, athletes, televangelists, you know, you know, people in these different uh, comedic beliefs. You got you got you got dudes like um uh what's this guy's name? Farrakhan, you know. You got guys like him and these different so-called leaders, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, uh, Henry Louis Gates, people like um, Umar Johnson. Um, my man used to be the rapper, David Banner. You know, he's a short, all these dudes are not, these are the false prophets. It says, 
the elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and they're in a low place and keep silence because they don't have the truth. So that's how they keep the silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of, of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. So our people are, are completely destroyed. Our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The Lord said, because you, you have rejected me, I will, because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou be as no priest unto me. And that means being a servant. That's why they, we're not, once again, the true servants are being, you know, rose up in these last days. And why are they no priests unto the Most High? Well, because that's being a servant. They refuse, they refuse to serve, you know, the living power. They refuse to come back to the Lord as Israelites. So therefore, they are completely destroyed. So with that, I hope that was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Rakak Badash, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yahushai, Call Halal Yamla, Allah Hayyanawa Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to the 12 tribes, so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you know, um, peace, love, blessings, and salutations be unto you of the hopeful elect, the Bakaryam, you know, in the Hebrew, with the elected ones, Lord willing, all the brothers doing this truth doing his work and preaching his truth with all truth righteousness and sincerity your salvation and may the blessing of election be upon your house you know double honor as always from yah to the elders and apostles who labor faithfully in his truth and are the true teachers of israel today peace love blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect you know the house of david coming back habayah from my and to the occupant aquafium the brothers and sisters who listen and believe keep believing keep listening keep fighting the good fight of faith like the apostle paul said you know and keep waiting on the Lord. And keep waiting on the Lord. Anybody telling you that the Lord, that waiting on the Lord is, is, is wicked and ain't righteous, that, that's a sure sign that that's a false prophet. So keep waiting on the Lord and keep not only waiting, but the Lord said to do what? That the kingdom of heaven come not by observation. You know, keep doing the work. Find your way in the ministry, find your way, you know, um, in this truth and keep doing what, it, keep doing what is righteous. You know, keep following and keep believing. Shalom.